It's time for an upgrade. Oh yes, I thought I'd get one of those new phones. You know the type, the ones that have got those special cameras in them that as you look onto your phone, it's recording your face and taking a picture of your biometrics so that later on when you go shopping, it can open the door for you, allow you to buy things and, and know exactly where you're going. One of those phones that listens to everything that you say on your phone messages or, or indeed when you're talking to a friend on the phone, it can record it and send it back to base and actually record everything that you do on the screen so it knows all your bank details if ever you put that in or your credit card or indeed when we get them how you use your central bank digital currency and and all of those things not only that it will track of course everywhere you go wherever you go all the time even when you switch it off i thought i'd upgrade to one of those phones and also those phones that come with all those extras you know the wearables that you can put on your wrist to be a bit like thunderbirds 19 19- 60s style where you can have a phone call into that or have personal messages come to you or those ones with special little earbuds that, so you can listen to your music or indeed instructions from whomever it is that wants to tell you what to do and those ones that now come with those marvellous chips. You just nip down to the local butcher, he'll slit open your head a bit, you shove it in, stitch it back up and put a plaster on and you're good to go. You can hear those wonderful voices in your head. Well, it won't be long until that actually comes, of course. I think that's part of the transhuman movement. Uh, I'm not talking about transgender, this is transhuman, you understand. Anyway, I was thinking about upgrading when all of a sudden there I was giving a talk at one of these places where I've been starting to go round and this bloke came out of the out of the woodwork. He sort of morphed out in front of me, all in black and very mysterious. I couldn't recognise him. And he just said to me, hello, Richard. I said, hello, who are you? Can't tell you. You're on the need to know basis. I thought, oh, all right then. And then he gave me this. He said, have a look at this. You might be up for an upgrade soon yourself. And I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. And this is a document from the Ministry of Defence. Apparently you can download it, which is a bit strange. There it is, the Ministry of Defence. You would think that all the secrets that the Ministry of Defence have wouldn't be available on a website. But apparently, if you're the enemies of the state, you can go there and download and see what we're doing. Very useful, isn't it? But anyway, this is a document called Human Augmentation. Ooh, so that's like a human upgrade. The dawn of a new paradigm. Well, that's worth having a look at. So let's have a look at it. A strategic implementations project. Everybody loves a good project, don't they? So it starts with a, a little disclaimer to say everything in here is whether you want it or not is likely to happen. And then there's uh, some sort of opening bit with authorization copyright saying for goodness sake don't tell anybody about this a forward which is signed by some majors and whatever generals and various important people in the government a few blank pages which has probably got uh, lemon writing you know secret code if only you know how to read it with micro dots then we get to the contents and this is quite humorous uh, it says part one understanding human augmentation mm, well we'd like to understand what it is would we not then there's the hu- or human augmentation technology that's where they're going to sort of alter your genes and inject you with sort of some stuff maybe nanotechnology I imagine chips in the head it's a bit like the old six million dollar man I don't know whether you remember that from the 1970s you know Steve Austin astronaut a man barely alive we can rebuild him we can make him better than he was before better stronger faster da 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 all that kind of malarkey and we all thought that that was just a load of old nonsense didn't we and yet here it is the human upgrade here it is so what else we've got the ethical considerations i had a look at that chapter yeah there are no ethical considerations whatsoever basically we're gonna do it so you're lumbered uh what else have we got legal considerations yeah that's the one where they say well we've got all the uh rights to do this and you've got no rights you're having it anyway oh it's all very nice isn't it 
Then we've got the implications for society, which is, of course, going to be much more cohesive and wholesome and nice because we'll all be obedient with these special voices in our head telling us exactly what to do. And apparently you can program these voices. You can sound like Tony if you want to or Bill, or even if you'd rather hear a sort of slightly uh, pseudo-German accent, you can be Klaus. It's, it's lovely. It's all good fun. Then, of course, you've got the implications for defence. Well, once you've been augmented into some sort of transhuman robot, you, of course, are then the thing that's going to go out there and uh, be shot at, basically. You're going to be the target because you're half man and half machine. Um, and then there's the methodology, uh, and that's where they basically tell you they'll strap you down and force these things into you, something like that. Then there's some more invisible code here. There's a preference, and the, my preference is not to get involved with any of this personally, but there we are. Then there's the secret method of how they're going to, to do it. And then we get to the executive summary, and this is, the, this is where it really gets very interesting. So key observations, it says here, that human augmentation will become increasingly relevant, partly because it can directly enhance human capability and behaviour, nice, and partly because it is the binding agent between people and machines. Yes, the binding agent between people and machines. Have you ever thought of being a machine? Oh, yeah. Can you remember back in the day when you used to work with a scythe cutting the grass and it was hard work, then came the threshing machine and did so much for you, and then came the machine, and instead of having a skill like a craftsman or anything like that where you could actually put your hands using a chisel and turn out something mar remarkable, you instead just had to press a button and pull a lever and the machine did it all for you. Well, now with human augmentation, that you don't have to think anymore for yourself. You don't have to worry about your spirituality. You know, no need to have that conversation with your God or whatever it is that you believe is in the next life or is here to guide you through life. No, no, no. You've got Klaus in your head telling you exactly what to do. Go out there, get out of the trench, go over the top and face the enemy. It is the Ministry of Defence after all. So then let's have a look and see what this is. It says here, human augmentation is not a shortcut. Getting the basis of human psychology and biochemistry and physiology is right is a prerequisite to human augmentation and will become more important in the future. So they're telling us. And then it shows you here a little diagram, which I won't bother to show you, but it tells you about how they're going to muck about with the uh, genetics, with with uh, germline modification and then some... Uh, some other sort of stuff that muck, mucking about with the gut uh, microbiome, uh, a brain interface. Yeah, nobody wants to worry about that, do they? Just have a great lop of your brain chucked out and then a whole load of electrics shoved in there, which will work with the nanotechnology. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. You'll be so much more improved and you'll be happy. Mm. You won't own any of this technology, you understand, but you will be happy with it. So that's all good. And then there's this piece here. Human augmentation is our insight to what lies beyond tomorrow's transfer, today's information age. Yeah, I know I didn't read that terribly well, but don't let that worry you. The coming of the biotech age. Yes, biotech. This is where we progress into the future in which we become partly machine. And at some point, I suppose, that individualism that makes you you, the ego, the thing that thinks for itself, the thing that actually enjoys life, the thing that makes life being worth life, the thing that makes you really appreciate things like nature and a nice cool drink, the, the breeze on a hot day, all of that. You won't have have to have any of that because machines, of course, they don't sleep, do they? They don't have the same emotions that you and I have and the same urges. You won't have any of that because they can be all tailor-made to be removed, which is nice. Takes away all that sort of worry and problems. If we go over there, we get a sort of, I don't know whether you can see that, some image of what they consider to be a, a trans-human and then it goes on about understanding all the electronics and then biotechnology and the nano data and all of that, which is uh, quite interesting. Uh, talks about the human performance of how you're going to be optimised. 
Do you, do you want to be optimised? Everybody needs to be optimised, don't they? Yeah, no, none of that sort of lying in bed on a Sunday morning when you have been optimised. I am obeying, I must do as I am told. Yes, I am a biotech human augmentation of a transhumanoid. Thank you, Klaus, and all your wonderful people. <clears throat> anyway, sorry about that. That was my Sunday morning routine. So then you get this other section here called the human platform. I didn't realise that we were a platform. I thought we were some organic uh, person or living individual, some sort of biological amazing function with a spirit that comes through us. But apparently we are a human platform upon which all this augmentation is allowed to be shoved on. It goes on, it goes, humans and future warfare, it says. Hmm, it's interesting, this is the Ministry of Defence, of course, and it's talking about warfare. Instead of thinking about, oh, how do we defend ourselves? You know, we'll, we'll put a few slats of wood across the front door and barricade ourselves in so we can defend ourselves with, you know, a potato, a spud gun, something like that. No, 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 it's talking about warfare. Now, to me, warfare is that thing about going out and causing war. And of course, you know who's going to be the one that has to go out and cause that war. And it goes on a little bit. Then we get to the final bit, the key deductions and insights. And according to the key deductions and insights, I missed a bit here where it says, oh, yes, like Steve Austin, you can do more, apparently, and you should do more. And you'll want to do more. Happiness and well-being and longevity are moving up the human agenda. There you go. Happiness and well-being and longevity, because you'll be alive for about 500 hours until, of course, the circuit blows up and that's the end of it, is moving up the human agenda. I didn't realise that we humans had a human agenda. Then we get to the key, conduction, the key deductions and insights. It says here, people have sought to augment themselves since the dawn of humanity. Now, when they say augment in the early days, perhaps they stuck in a few rings on their neck and they shoved in a, a few earrings and that sort of thing. Perhaps they painted themselves with a bit of blue woad or even had a tattoo. That is um, a, a long way, is it not, from having just you know, a little pigtail on the back of your hair or combing your, your face or growing a moustache or any of those things to actually being uh, all biotech up with uh, special nanotechnology and genome replacement and I am exactly what you want me to be, all of that nonsense. Um, and it goes on, human augmentation encompasses science and technology that optimises or enhances the human performance. Well, 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 that's what's coming down the pipe. And if you're not scared by that, then I don't know what it will scare you. But don't worry, because you'll be very healthy with your mealworms and stag beetles as you become a human transformed individual into a fighting machine that will be nice and kind. Personally, I'm going to reject all of that. I don't see that any of that has anything to do with this amazing and incredible body, this superb mind and our spirituality, which is far, far better than anything man could possibly create. That we are part of a universal mind or a spirit that is part of the universe that will take us into far, far greater things. And very soon there will be some sort of transformation, but not from a science mechanical way in which we we no longer have the critical ability to think, but we will ascend to something far, far better as we get right rid of all of this nonsense and push back against the, 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 the kind of um, ministry of defence idea of what we and, and you, me and you should be. So I would certainly be pushing back against this. But of course, you can, as I said at the beginning, upgrade yourself and start that process with one of those lovely new mobile phones with the chips and the wearables and the earpieces and the monitoring and the biotechnology and, and all of that. It's entirely up to you, but we don't have to have this future. I think we can push back and just simply say, like so much of the nonsense that's coming our way, just say no.